Um, all right, so I'm gonna go over everything from lighting, composition, um, and some like basic food styling stuff. Um, just to give you guys a little background on my photographer career history. Um, I moved over here from Boston and went to Columbia College, uh, downtown in Grant Park for photography. Um, and then moved in to food photography after I studied abroad and realized I wasn't taking pictures of my friends, but every single food market and all that kind of stuff and came home and was, that's all I wanted to do. So um, graduated with um, photography major and concentration in commercial photography and then a personal focus in food photography. Um, yeah, so um, just before we start, how many people here, when you're shooting your blog, shoot with your phone? Okay, awesome. How many of you guys use like a point and shoot camera? Anybody use that? Okay, and then does anybody use like a DSLR? Nice, okay. All right, so we're gonna go over all that stuff. Um, I'll go over the DSLR stuff briefly. If you guys have further questions later, that's awesome too. Um, all right, so we'll jump right into it. Um, so the first thing, is on there is lighting. Um, we're going to focus mainly on natural lighting today. Um, there is, you know, artificial lighting, so hot lights and strobes. Difference between hot lights and strobes. Strobes flash when you shoot, so it stops motion. So when you see like advertisements where they do pours or um, like the martini glass and they swash it around and it splashes out, that's all done with strobes. So it stops motion. You can really, really fast shutter speed, which is DSLR stuff, but, um, and then hot lights, you just turn them on and they stay so you can watch it the whole time. They get really hot, that's why they're called hot lights. Um, and then natural light, which is my favorite and it's the most user friendly, it's the easiest thing to do, is just, it's awesome. It makes food look the best, in my opinion. Um, okay, so the main thing with natural lighting is you wanna make sure you have enough light. So a big mis, or a, a lot of times I see people will be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna use natural light, and then it's like five o'clock and there's like one little window. You wanna make sure that you're timing it right. So you may have to get up, you know, depending on where your window is, um, if it's facing east or west, you may have to get up at certain times, um, just map it out. Um, and then, all right, I'll show you this stuff over here. So we use this window today, and we use these things called fill cards. This is just poster board from Walgreens. So you can just cut it up and just cut however size your dish is. So for these guys, so we did all these over here today. Oh, this over here. We use these fill cards and you just find the direction of the light, point it to the food and you find that, right? So here, we'll go over some slideshow stuff. Okay, so these are ones that I thought didn't have the greatest lighting in the world. When you're lighting, the biggest thing is to have a direction for your light. So as you can see in these ones, everything is lit the same. Does everybody see that? So it's flat. When someone says like your image is flat, that's what they're mainly talking about. Is there's just no shadows, there's no direct highlights, everything is just the same exposure. Same with this one. Um, a lot of, it's a a lot of like commercial use and advertisements, they'll just plot things on white backgrounds. Sometimes you see that stuff. Mainly when they do that, they're just um, doing that so they can cut it out in Photoshop and place it on a different layout. All right, so, so the difference between that one and then something like this, so that you can see where the light is coming from, right? So this one's coming from probably a window over here and this one's coming from the left corner. <coughs> And then you see this highlight down here. This is probably from a fill card. So the fill card is here pointing towards the light. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right, and this is another one. This is Michael Mayes. He's like my favorite photographer in the world. I get really nerdy about it, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one too. He, I'm not sure if these are natural light ones. Um, mainly when people use artificial light, they're replicating natural light. So they want, you know, they're replicating sunlight. So that's why the direction of the light is so important because when people use artificial lights, they get really excited and they're like, oh, I can light everything and you know, everything can be the same and that's great, but they're gonna know you artificially lit it, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends what you're doing for, what you're doing it for. Okay. Um, okay. 
And then another thing, like the fill cards that we have, is these black cards. This is also just from Walgreens. It's just the presentation board. So when you're lighting, sometimes you'll get really, especially if you're using white plates or white anything, or reflective surfaces. So if you have like um, tongs with like um, metal or steel on them, they get really, really reflective and you'll, they'll blow out in the photo. So what you can do is just block the highlight with the card. And the cards allow you to do it. You can just block, like I could just block this edge of the plate. Does that make sense? So like I had it when I was doing this shot, I just had it over here and it was blocking these edges so they didn't blow out. Does everybody know what I mean when I say blow out? Like overexposed, right? Yeah, right. yes. So here, I'll pull up Lightroom. Actually, yeah. Well, I'll show you after. So there's actually, um, I'm not sure if phones, there's probably an app somewhere that, will, that would show you. But in your cameras, there's something called a histogram and it's like a graph and it shows you where the highlights go and where the um, shadows come out. And when you're shooting, you can set it so the highlights will blink if they're blown out. And what it mean, when I say blown out, it means there's no pixel information in that spot. So in post-production, if you go to edit it, if you use it in Photoshop, if you go on I, you know, iPhoto, Capture One, whatever you use, it won't, if the exposure is wrong and you want to fix it later, if there's no information in there, you, you can't bring it down. There's no way that you're going to be able to bring that down and expose it correctly. That's why a lot of times people will say, underexpose your things so they're a little bit darker because then at least there's information in there and you can bring it out. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right. Um, all right, so let's, oh, white balancing, that's the other thing I want to talk about. Um, so the other huge, 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 huge thing in lighting is white balancing. White balancing is um, finding the correct color combination in your image. So a lot of times it all depends on what lights there are. So if you're using natural light, that should be the only type of light hitting your subject. So like earlier, we had that's why it was so dark in here earlier, if anyone came upstairs, because the only light that we had was the window light. So we had to shut all of these off because these are fluorescent, I'm guessing, or tungsten maybe. Um, and what happens is tungsten light has like a yellow tint to it. So if you mix the two, you're going to get, especially in reflective surfaces, like, like that white bowl over there or something, you're going to get like a yellow hint on it. And it's really, really hard to fix it later because you have to physically go in and like pick the color and like change it to you have to know your complementary colors and like change it to the blue and add blue to the yellow and it gets really complicated. So that's the other reason why you want to have enough light. Okay. So if like, say you're shooting at like 5 p.m. and it was like getting kind of dark and you're worried about losing your light and you flip on your kitchen light, that's going to make your life so much harder later. Okay, um, if you're just using tungsten light or um, fluorescent light or something like that, obviously I don't advise it, but you can, if it's all the same light, you can white balance it so it doesn't look like that. Um, has anybody ever used the app Visco? V-S-C-O, does anybody know what that is? Yeah, okay. All right, so. How do you spell it again? It's V-S-C-O, all caps. And what does it do? It's an, okay, so it's an app. It's basically like, when you go into it, it's kind of like Instagram, but you can shoot in it and they have a, a manual white balance in the app that you can use. Um, I don't have it, I don't have like a picture of it on here, but um, I can show, if anyone like downloads it and, or I have it on my phone, I can show you guys. Yep, Visco is free, yeah, and you can, the only, the people get confused in that one because they, they don't want to shoot in the app. They want to like bring their photo into the app. You have to shoot with the app, the camera in the app. And then you just hit white balance and you can, it has a slider and you just slide it to where you want it to be. And it's really awesome. And you can also pick, um, usually on all cameras, DSLRs, um, in a lot of apps, there's like six different white balance options. So you can do like auto, tungsten, fluorescent, daylight, um, cloudy, I think is one. 
and a lot of you know those sometimes work like if you you know if you're outside and you use daylight sometimes they work it has like a specific color temperature that it's already in place so like sometimes a daylight one you'll have like a blue tint because you're using daylight but you're in a kitchen that has like a lot of warm tones and stuff so it reflects um, so usually manual is the best one and sometimes you can do auto and then like do auto and if it looks okay just find in the manual where just use that as a reference point which is completely fine um, yeah so another thing for white balance so white balancing I would say is the most important thing because a lot of times you get like that giant yellow cast over all your photos if you're doing it with your phone um, and you can fix that in the app if you're shooting with it my I would not advise to use an app to edit your white balance like later I would do it while you're shooting that makes sense um, another good one is Afterlight, which is another app that one I believe is like a dollar or something it used to be free and then they made it a dollar um, but they have a ton of cool they have a ton of cool filters and they're not very drastic um, and I'm not a huge fan of filters but you can you can put the filter on and then use the slider and take it down so the filter's only on there like a hint so that helps that's a cool it's a cool tool to use I believe this you might be able to do that too I know they have some set filters in there also um, for that okay okay so I'm just gonna go through this and then I'll show I'll do like a little demo up here and then we can split into groups okay all right all right so the next thing on here is composition <laughs> um, okay so the first thing on that line I don't know if it's on yours but when you're composing if there's like a certain crop or format that you're like submitting your image to um, I know for the blog there's not really you can just submit whatever yeah, yeah. Well, like today's photos right on the website as you guys know the photos are very horizontal in nature um, so the Lord has been in consideration yeah so um, I was shooting for a um, catering company and they would um, they had contracts with smaller restaurants so every time they got a new restaurant I would shoot the menu for them and they had it was a very specific crop that they had it was almost like a square and then they had what they called an essence shot and it was like a bunch of different dishes in one and it was like super horizontal and skinny and the first time I didn't know that and it was not communicated and so when you went to crop it you were cutting out a bunch of information and like props and you know styling and the light got cut out and it was you know so it ends up looking very very like chopped um, so when you're shooting you want to make sure that you're lining you everything is in your frame so for phones it's it's basically it's really simple I know you can put the grid on some which helps and then what's in your what's on your screen is what you're shooting that's what you're get. and you can crop it down however um, so that's one thing um, another thing is you're unsure what the crop's going to be shoot wide and then crop it in so have like a bunch of extra space around it and then you have room to just crop it down okay um, and there's three different angles for shooting that are mainly used there's a 45 degree angle which is you're just looking straight down which is like this one almost um, and then there's overhead and then no <coughs> All right, well. Okay, it'll pop up in a second. Um, these are two overhead, and then there's parallel with the with the with the food. Um, with the overhead and the 45 degree, you don't really have to worry about a background, which is kind of nice um, for the if you're straight shooting straight. You want to make sure you have some like appealing in the back. Um, we'll go over a little bit of that and like prop styling and stuff. Um, what else? If you shoot overhead, you still want to light up. Yes. Yeah. Um, overhead. It. Yeah. You still want to have a direction. That's probably the toughest one to have a direction in general, um, because it's you know everything is in the frame. But if you have like an edge, like this has an edge here. If you put like a highlight on the edge, that helps. Or if something is like if you push whatever dish you have and you just like 
hoist it up a little bit, whatever your, what's in the dish, then you can, it'll have the light hit the edge rather than just hit um, the edge of the bowl or something. Um, all right. Okay, and then choose the angle based on your subject. So if you're shooting like a burger, don't shoot it overhead because all you'll see is the bun, right? Um, pizzas are really good overhead. It's really hard to get a good pizza shot that's parallel or well, 45 degrees sometimes okay. Um, but you can kind of tell, you can pick and choose. Um, doing diptychs is also awesome. Um, so like this guy here, it's two images together um, and doing a different angle for each one. That's fun um, to do. I know, I think there's some apps where you can like put the diptych together. I believe in Visco you can do it too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so that's a really big thing too. And that when I was shooting in the catering company, they had me do for every dish, there was three different angles. So they had three, so when you clicked on it, there was like three different views in the menu online. And she wanted an overhead 45 degree and then like, a f yeah, whatever I wanted the other one. But the overhead, it was always really challenging because we, there was like sandwiches and burgers and that kind of stuff, which wasn't exactly appealing overhead. Um, so that was interesting, but you make do. Um, okay. And then the other thing is paying attention to your frame. So like you can see he cropped some of these edges out. That's, that's fine. Um, just make sure it looks intentional, if that makes sense. So like this kind of drives me crazy, but I'm also a little OCD, so that would just drive me crazy. But if you just crop, like I would have pushed that up a little bit so this didn't get lost down here. Um, a lot of times like the ends of forks get lost if you're using like a utensil and it's like shoved in the corner. If it's like a significant amount of the fork, usually that's it's fine um also if you're cropping so like he cropped it here he cropped that there he cropped this almost in half so like if there's enough cropping around the edge it'll even out and it'll you know look more appealing but if like one thing is cropped out like if this was the only thing cropped out your eye would just go straight to that and no one would look at the rest of the image as a full um same with here like he cropped both of these ends of the cutting board out on the top of that, so it's not as bad. Um, yeah. So just pay attention to your crops and don't cut edges off of things, um, especially food too. Like if you have like a sprig of something on top and you like want to do something like this where you are cutting half of in close up and like your sprig is like over to the edge a little bit, it you you know you may not notice it when you're shooting and then you'll like go and put it up on like a bigger screen and you'll be like oh. I dropped the sprig out. <laughs> Shoot. So it's, pay, it's just paying attention to it when you're shooting. Um, okay. All right. And then the uh, one other thing that's really important with composition is cutting things in half. So we, ha we learned the thirds rule in school, which is splitting your image up into thirds. And which it makes sense sometimes. But if you have... Like if you're, say you're having two plates, right? And you wanna have two plates in the image. If you put them like this, there's like a direct line in half, right? And then everyone's just gonna look at that gap in between them and they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to choose which plate to look at. Does that make sense? Do you want there to be like a flow within your image? So like in this one, the edge of the, cast iron pan comes up here, you go through the chicken, and then you come out here, and you come back through this line. So there's a lot of different lines. If this was moved up, this whole empty space would be, and your eye would just go straight there. So you don't want the viewer to have to think, basically. You want it to be very, very obvious of what they have to look at. Um, same with here. So it comes up with this, and then it, you go through the food, and then you go up out this way. So there's like a very clear direction of where you want your eye to go. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right, the next thing that's in composition kind of ties into food styling, so then we can go a little bit into there. So also what you want to look at is making triangles with stuff, which is like a really, really easy trick that's really very easy. So with this, say you had like, say you were 
propping things with like extra herbs or like shaved chocolate or something. If you make a triangle with somewhere in the picture with them, it's just more pleasing to the eye. So like here he made, he's got limes and it's in a triangle. You may not notice it when you're looking at it, but it's just easier, you know, so you have like a diagram almost to follow. Um, and same with the, um, with the props. He had like the handle, ladle, cup. So you can find those triangles. This is obviously a triangle. And then you've got this edge, this edge, and then the bottle. So it makes that triangle. Is that, let me see that. So that's like a really interesting way to make them. And you can like ch change the direction of your triangles. But if they're in a triangle, it's just more pleasing. It's more pleasing to the eye. Especially rather than putting like, if you're sprigging things and you put them in a straight line, everyone's eye is going to go straight to the line. Or if you make a box, everyone's going to look in the middle of the box. So you have to kind of train yourself to figure out where people's eyes are going to go when they look at the image. Um, and like ask yourself those questions when you're shooting. Be like, where are they going to look? If something is like overexposed in this corner, they're going to look in that corner, right? If something is like really, really dark and they can't see anything in that corner, they're going to look straight to that corner. Um, same with color. If something, if you have like a bright green and like you're shooting, I don't know, say you're shooting like donuts, right? Like plain donuts and they're all the same color and then your surface is like all one color. And then you have like one with like sp sprinkles over to the side or something. Everyone's eyes are going to go to the colored sprinkles. They're not even going to look at the, they're not even going to see the donuts. Does that make sense? So just make sure that everything is evenly throughout the photo so you guys can, so that your viewer sees it. Okay. Um, so now we're going to do is talk, oh, yes. I, I always was taught, not always, but by circus shots. <laughs> um, yeah. Odd numbers of things on planes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well. Did you already cover that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, but I was like three, five as opposed to odd. Yep. Numbers. Yeah, you're right. You um, got <laughs> <laughs> the answer right. <laughs> 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 oh, um, yeah, so. Odd numbers of things is like a, I always, I don't like even numbers. It just looks awkward if you have even numbers. So if you have two, like this, like I said about cutting things in half, it's really hard not to cut something in half if you have two of something or if you have four of something. There's always going to be a, like a line somewhere that just isn't going to, it's going to look like there's supposed to be other rows of stuff. It's just going to look weird. So yes, like three, five, um, even one thing. You know, if you have two of something, shooting one of it is way better than shooting both of them together. Um, and especially if you're going to do like a grid with something or like, like I have a shot where I did a grid of donuts and I had to use, I think it was, I don't remember, it was like, oh, it was 15. And I had it and I kept doing, I had like 14 and then I had like 12 and I was like, why doesn't this look right? And then my teacher was like, 15. And I was like, oh, all right. That's all my ratio. So um, odd numbers are definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yes. How do you best use like the, either the fill cards or like a filter or something like when you're shooting? Yeah, here, I'll, I'll go over that right now. So um, the next thing we're going to do is food styling and then I'll show you guys a demo of this stuff. So food styling is an art. Um, I and like an amateur food stylist with just like my shooting. Um, but I um, worked, I, w I assisted on a lot of shoots after college um, with a photographer named Joe Pellegrini and he shoots um, when you walk into a subway shop and you see all the sub subs and like salads and all the stuff on the menu, he shoots all that stuff. Um, it is the most meticulous, like precise, shoots I've ever been on. They're like insane. There's like six food stylists. Um, there's like two, there's a bunch of prop stylists and they come in with like, I used to have to set up their food kit next to the shoot and they would come in with their tweezers and like move the turkey like a fourth of an inch to the right or like spray the lettuce with like a spray bottle to like 
right before he shot, like stuff like that. Um, they had, they would pre-bake the bread and put, build, they would build the sandwiches up and they put a piece of cardboard on the bread on the bottom and then build on that so that if they sprayed water or anything, it wouldn't seep into the bread. And they, um, I had, we had closed steamers on set and they would put the cheese on and then right before he was gonna shoot, they would bring in a closed steamer and melt the cheese. And so it like dripped down, it was insane. And then they had um, torches. So if they needed to like toast the bread on the right side a little bit and make it look a little more toasty, they had that. Um, it was crazy, but yeah. I just recently read an article actually. Yeah. Um, is it true that you guys would use like shaving cream for liquid cream to, like, yep. to withhold like the long amount of time? That you yep, have yeah, so shaving cream's a good one. Um, that's the main one for whipped cream actually. And then um, fake ice cream is another one that's really cool. It's Crisco and powdered sugar. Oh. And so you just mix <laughs> and then, huh? I mashed potatoes. Yep, mashed potatoes. Um, another great thing with mashed potatoes, which I've done before, was he, um, and I said on a shoot, but if you just get like cheap instant mashed potatoes and make a batch and then put them in the fridge like overnight, so they're like a little firm. If you're shooting like a bowl of anything, so like, um, like we probably could use it for the chili today or like, or um, cereal was the shoot I was on that he used it for. And you fill a bowl of mashed potatoes and then they organized, like they stuck the corn flakes in the mashed potatoes and made a bowl of cereal. And then they put glue in between all the flakes like milk. Glue is another one that works for milk. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty, it's intense. Um, there is actually though, they had to stop well, they have to stop. They still did it, but you, if you're, sh if you, whatever you're selling in the ad has to be real. So the easiest example is if, say, like Butterball is has an ad for the turkey, and they want to do a shoot, and it's like a full Thanksgiving feast. Anything else on that table can be fake. So they could have like fake stuffing, fake pumpkin bread, fake whatever, but the turkey has to be real. So that's like an, it was an interesting concept on that past. Um, okay, so food styling kit, like a basic one. Um, the one thing that I use like constantly, Q-tips. So if there are like little smudges like around the edges of the bowl, they just come off with Q-tips really easily. Um, you can wet them, doesn't matter. Um, but those are like, I have like a hundred of these in my camera bag like all the time. Um, so that was really helpful. Another thing is tweezers. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing like, and all that stuff, you don't wanna like manhandle your food too much when you're shooting it because it'll lose the shape. You might like hit something by, accidentally, mm -hmm. by accident and it, you might just like lose the angle on it or like these are pretty sturdy. But if these were propped up with something, sometimes that you, if you hit it, it might just like knock it out of place. Um, Food styles are very, very, very intricate about not knocking things. Um, yeah, um, but tweezers are great. Long, I have these ones. I need to get longer ones that are like six inches long that you can like not have to reach in so far. Um, but it's like also if there's like, if a sprig fell off or if there's like a flake of like anything, if there's like a flake of, if there's like a pepper, it's like a pepper on there or like, um, anything and you just and you can't and your fingers are just like too big it's just not going to come out you know your tweezers are awesome um okay i have skewers and toothpicks which i do not have but toothpicks are also awesome if you especially if you're doing sandwiches and you stick a toothpick in the back base and you build it up like this it'll just keep it and you can make a wall of toothpicks no one's ever going to see it because there's stuff back there also toothpicks are like um, they're not like, you know, bright blue or anything. They're pretty, they blend in pretty well. So that's also an awesome one. Um, speaking of like propping things up, another good one is like a pin set. Like if you're sewing, like a sewing pin set. So just different sizes of pins. I had, um, in school we had like these food workshops and we would, it, you'd have to like get into it and it was like eight people and you all shot the same thing for two days or eight hours a day and they brought in a food stylist and a prop stylist for, you, for us to work with, which is awesome. And um, 
Peg, Peg the prop stylist and Lisa the food stylist and they came in. Lisa literally had two rolling suitcases for her food kit. She had everything. Um, but one thing she did with the pins is she, we were shooting waffles with strawberries on them. And so she would cut the strawberries, the tops off, and she would take like, I had like three strawberries like over the side or something. And one of the um, leaves on top of the strawberry was like wilting after a while because if it's under the light obviously it's gonna wilt. She just plucked it off, took one from another strawberry and like pinned it into the strawberry and she like built me three new strawberries which was interesting but it was pretty cool. Um, so there's like little stuff like that that you can do with pins and pins like you can stick them all the way down and you're not gonna see them. That's the main thing is you don't want to see anything that you're doing, pinning or anything like that. Um, Another thing is blue tape. Um, this stuff is awesome, or just masking tape. If you're shooting and you have like a specific layout, like say I wanted to move this, but I want to know where marking things, basically. So marking here. So like if I move this and just stuck a little piece of tape here, so I know that that's where it was. If I wanted to go back, um, they did that a lot in the subway shoots because they, you know, they had a straight on and then an angle shot for every single foot long sandwich and they would tape it every time they moved the sandwich so that they would know where to put the next one because they have to be like exactly the same. Um, okay, and this is something that I don't really use that often, but I just like to have it. Um, this is actually something I got, we had to have it when I was in, when I took film to blow the dirt and dust off your negatives. Um, but it's come in handy in a couple shoots. So if you have like dust somewhere, you can just blow it off. It's just air. Um, I wouldn't recommend using canned air because it's like really forceful. It'll probably just like blow everything off the table. Um, and then the other thing I have is one of these. It's a sponge. It's like a, what you use on like your feet or something. But if you have like, um, even like these biscuits or donuts or um, if you need to like sand the edge of something, it works pretty well. Um, and you can just, I usually just throw these away after I use them because they get gross. Um, another cool thing that I don't have, um, but it's called matte spray. So if you have like um, any kind of like dessert or that's in like a single ounce and the top of it is like really, really, really shiny and you're like, that's not gonna work. You just spray it with matte spray and it brings the shininess down. And then you can, use like a paintbrush with water or something and just like make your own shine, basically. Um, another cool, cool one is if you mix water and I wanna say oil, like just vegetable oil and put it in like an eyedropper, you can make like droplets on stuff and they just stay, like they don't move. So if you wanna make like droplets on a strawberry or on like grapes or something and you just like do it with an eyedropper, you'll have like nice water droplets that don't move. They're not gonna stay there forever, but they'll, they'll stay there longer than a normal, a normal droplet. Um, another good thing is Sharpies. Um, if you have a surface or something that you just use for food photography and you need to have all different colored Sharpies and you can just like fill it in with a Sharpie rather than going into like Photoshop and like getting it out, you know, getting it out that way. Um, I'm a huge fan of doing everything while you're shooting. I hate editing. <laughs> it takes forever. Um, so the more you can do while you're shooting, the better. Um, even with your phones, you know, if you, the more you can do when you're shooting it, rather than going and using like editing software on your phone, it just makes your life easier um, in that way. I have a question. Yeah. Speaking of phones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is, are we not supposed to be using Instagram? Like, are there filters like too harsh or like too much? Um, the only thing I will say about Instagram filters is that once you put them on there, like you can't, there's no way to like get it off. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and also like I was saying with the Visco one, you can like choose how much of that filter is on the photo. Whereas Instagram, it like, it chooses it for you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not against Instagram. I love Instagram. Um, I usually use just for like my Instagram, but I usually use like the afterlight filter and then just like bring it into Instagram and I don't even use anything 
and Instagram. So that's another thing is you can use like shoot it on Visco or shoot it in another app or something and then and then just put it in Instagram like for it to be on Instagram. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, and this goes cool too because they have like a feed. Like you can follow people and have your own. That's pretty cool too. So it's nice because you can like look at other things and do all that kind of stuff. Um, on yeah. The, on the basic supplies, why do you use styrofoam balls? Oh, yeah, I don't have one. Um, those are also kind of the same thing with potato. With I said with the mashed potatoes. So if you get like a styrofoam ball from like Michaels or something and just cut it in half. And if you put it in like, if you put it in like the bottom of this bowl and then put like, if you were doing like spaghetti or like pasta dishes, if you put that styrofoam bowl, bowl in there, you don't have to put as much food in here. So you can shape the circular, basically. Um, it just, it's just like a filler. Um, the reason I like using styrofoam is because it doesn't, um, it stays that shape. So mashed potatoes are awesome if like if that's what you got um, for make do, but it, they will start to like if you put chili on mashed potatoes, they're gonna start to like sink. Styrofoam balls, they won't. It'll just seep into the into the styrofoam rather than um, the whole thing sinking. Um, yeah, but styrofoam balls are really cool. I you can also do like if you had like if you did like an upside down ramekin in here. That helps too. Like if you just have, or like a smaller bowl that would fit upside down. You don't necessarily need to use styrofoam, but just something that won't sink down and like get ruined by the food. Um, yeah, if you do like a, you just might have to shape it more if you do like a ramekin or something. Um, if it's something dry, you can just crumple up like paper towels and throw them in. Um, it's easier, the less food you work with, the easier it is. So um, with like baked goods, obviously, you know, um, like it's not a lot a ton of food but if you're doing like a dish like the chili or pasta like I said or um, yeah just anything that goes like in a bowl that's like a lot soups and stuff it's awesome to have something in there um, just as like a filler but yeah you can use like paper towels and stuff if it's like dry stuff um, that's not an issue what else did I put on there did I miss anything so are there any tips if yeah. you don't have the like luxury of taking your pictures and not like restaurants. Yeah. Is it really good? Like taking it at a restaurant? Yeah. Like um, I would ask if it's possible to get seated by a window. Um, I wouldn't be shy about that at all. Um, I went to has anyone ever been to Canela on Clark Street? Delicious. But um, they don't have like a lot of window lighting at all and I waited an extra like fifteen minutes and they just you know, we'll seat you. The people are pretty I think restaurants are getting more used to people coming in and asking because there's a lot there's so many food bloggers and restaurant bloggers and all that kind of stuff um, so yeah I would just ask to get seated by a window that's basically all you need and shooting restaurants is kind of fun like if you're just going out and like for brunch or whatever because you have like a ton of props on your table so like they give you the dish and you have utensils you have salt and pepper shakers you have napkins um, you have like coffee cups and all that stuff and it, it just looks kind of cool, the atmosphere. Um, but yeah, I think getting seated by a window is like the easiest. If you if you can't get seated by a window, I would just use that white balancing tool as so much. Do you not use a flash? I wouldn't advise that, no. I've never been a huge fan of flash. Um, just because usually what happens is there's gonna be somewhere in the photo that you can, you can see where you use the flash. Um, probably a lot of, you know, most people probably wouldn't notice. It also just gives, like I was talking about the direction of the light, when there's a flash, it flashes over the whole dish, so you lose the direction a little bit. Um, so, that's what I'd say about that. But if you use, um, yeah, I mean you could do the white balance thing if you're not seated by a window. You won't really have that much direction with that either, but it's probably better than, I would say that would almost be better than using a flash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? <laughs> um, okay. All right. So really quick, I'm going to talk about prop styling. So it's a completely, I didn't know this, but it, until I started assisting, but prop styling and food styling are two completely separate jobs. 
So a lot of shoots will have a separate prop stylist, separate food stylist. Um, Peg, who I, who was awesome and was a prop stylist um, on one of the shoots, she, we had, what was it for? Oh, it was for, um, I think it was for Heineken, I think. And we were pouring it in a glass. She brought like 50 different beer glasses for the photographer to choose from. Um, and like, we still had to go get more. Like, it's insane. Um, there's places called Prop Houses, if you really want to get into it. Um, there's an awesome place called Prop Abilities off of, um, I wish I could remember what, I think it's Chicago, off Chicago Avenue, but it's like West. <laughs> um, and they, you just walk in, it is the most insane place. You walk in and there's just like racks of tabletops that you can take and there's just from floor to ceiling, literally, there's things hanging from the ceiling that you can rent. Um, there's like glasses, um, plates, utensils, everything you can think of is in there. Old toys, like everything. Um, and you just go in and it's like this little woman who runs it and she's just like a giant pack rat and she just collects everything. But um, it's really awesome and she'll help you out. <laughs> and she'll like set you up um, with a tabletop and like help you compose the image with you, um, which is, it's really cool. Um, but the, and there's another place called, I think it's just called The Prop House. And it's owned by these two guys and they are the most OCD people I've ever met in my life. Like you walk in and there's racks and nothing is out of place. Like all of the plates are stacked evenly and all the edges are like lined up. Everything is color coded. Every, everything. It's insane. And they, they watch, like, you'll walk in and they watch you to make sure you don't, like, it's crazy. But that's also a really good one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, if you, and another great place to get really cheap prop, like, cool props is, like, the Brown Elephant, if you guys have ever been there. They have a ton of stuff for, like, a dollar or, like, 50 cents, like, mugs, forks, all that stuff. Um, I've definitely done that. Or, like, thrift stores, any of that stuff. Because it's also stuff, like, Anything like run down is gonna look better. And the reason for that is it won't reflect. So you won't get like weird reflections if you have like a really, really shiny fork. Sometimes it's good if that's what you're, you know, if that's what you're going for, it's awesome. But if it's not, it just, sometimes it makes your life harder. So like a run down forks or um, anything like that is really cool to use. Um, I have a bunch of like napkins and stuff, like different like burlap napkins and white napkins and stuff like that, which are awesome to use. Um, just different things like that. But you want to make sure all your stuff matches. And that's also where like using complementary colors comes in. Um, things can look, <laughs> easily look very patriotic or like themed to a holiday really quickly. So you just want to like, pay attention to that kind of stuff. Um, using red and green if you're not shooting something that's Christmas usually doesn't, you know, people will be like, oh, why is this? for Christmas. So that's another thing going like, think about what your viewer is going to think when they look at it. Um, especially with the blog because you're, you're selling, a, not selling, but you're talking about a certain thing. So, you know, write your blog post and then pick out like what you're going to shoot from your writing is an easy way to do it too. Um, okay. Do you prefer white plates and bowls as opposed to colored or does it um, depend on the... It depends. Um, I don't mind white stuff. It can look really like clean and which I like, um, but I like a lot of my stuff is a lot of it's more like rustic for lack of a better word, but it um, like darker colors or like slates. I use like um, the slate material, like black or like marble. I really like um, um, stuff like that. And you you know you'll as you if you guys start to like do some of the stuff like as you start to shoot, you'll realize what you like and don't like, um, and you'll you'll very quickly be like, oh, I don't like that. And you never, you know, you'll never do it again. It's kind of like process of elimination, basically, when you're starting out. Um, yeah, all right, so let's, um, um, yeah. Are there particular services that you prefer to shoot on? I mean, if it's not a tabletop, I mean, can you, if you have a really nice wood floor, can you shoot on that? Yeah, um, I used, I still use, um, I have the back of bookshelves are always good surfaces because you know I have like this dark wood bookshelf and it's like just it's like this high but the back of it is just solid dark wood and so I flip it over all the time and like that's my surface and it's like up too. Um, 
there's yeah you you can get like super 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 creative with it um i have i had like a nightstand from ikea like those like they're literally like this tall and they just with the four legs and those legs just like screw in and i was like this and i got rid of it but i was like oh, i'll keep the top of it and i just unscrewed the legs and kept the top square and it's just like a black surface um also with tables too like you can it's a little work but if you unscrew the legs and you need to move it you know somewhere or and you just want to use the tabletop or if you're getting rid of the table and you can take the legs off just keeping the tabletop is always good too and then you can paint it they also have um at like home depot or menards they have the panels that you can just like click together they're like wood panels and they're like five or six feet this way and you can just like hook them together and then you can paint them whenever like you can stain them or just leave it or make it white and sand it and make it like whitewashed um so there's easy ways to make backgrounds there's like a you know yeah Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so if you're um, shooting by the window and you don't want, let's say, a curtain or um, or blinds in the window, but the mm -hmm. lighting is just amazing, and you're shooting right next to it, can you put like one of the white drops in it? And if you don't want the window as the background, is that what you're saying? The white boarding would it filter right. that shade? So what you could do in that situation is if you, so like I shot towards the window today. So you can just change the direction of your camera. So you could like, the window lighting could come sideways and you could just shoot this way and then make like a background here. Does that make sense? So like, if this was my background and I needed the window light, I just put my camera here and shoot in this way. Um, if you're doing like the parallel where you're like the same level as the floor in this way. Um, yeah, and I don't, you know, when I'm like, I don't like to get a ton of the background in there too. I'll like pile up props in the back or like cups or like, um, that's why like napkins get really handy because you can like high fold them and like make really high folds and look, you know, um, and just like blur it out and it, it gets really nice. Does that answer your question? That, okay. All right, does anybody else have any questions? Okay, 